This video is presented by EA Game Changers. They gave me the game earlier so I could get this content out early for you guys. What's going on guys, Bengal again here. This might be one of the first videos of Madden NFL 22 that I post, and I'm excited for the new year, football's back, and there are changes to Madden's franchise mode that you guys probably don't know too much about. And it really revolves around staff points for this video. Check out franchise staff points. You can even see in the top right, over 2,000 staff points available. I've simulated to like 2040. Tom Brady's still playing for this Bucks team. He's uh, 65 years old now. <laughs> but uh, staff points is a pretty like cool new addition to the game. And uh, I'm capturing this footage early. EA gave me access to it so I can give you guys access to it, which I think is pretty cool. So uh, shout out to them trying to make an effort to make franchise better. And I think this is a really, really good addition. It's like NCAA 14 in some ways, but there are a lot more. It's a lot more in depth going from head coach to offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, player personnel, a bunch of different trees you can go down, a bunch of different branches, should I say as well. We're going to highlight every different ability here and talk to you guys about some things you might want to think about before you start your franchise and as you go throughout your franchise. So we'll start out with head coach and we have two different trees here. We have player growth and we have staff modifications. And if you guys like the content, more Madden 22 content, obviously on the way, a lot of franchise stuff. So you might enjoy checking out the channel, maybe subscribe if this is up your alley, like the video of course, but player growth, secret remedy, and you can see the different uh, like staff point cost associated with everything here. So Secret Remedy is 20. We're not going to talk about the price for every single one of these. It does vary. On the different branches, it's all the same. But you can only go one, one way. That's part of the fun is you can't have the best of both worlds. You have to choose. So in this particular scenario, we went down the right side. We're going to talk about everything. So player growth, you decrease multi-week injury recovery time. So injuries in practice could be a big thing this year so this is just the first one checking it off the list might be something important to have and you can see that each of these there are two different levels right so o of two on this one we didn't go down the left side but from the top down increase xp gains for free safety strong safeties and training by 10 percent and then the next tier is increase xp gains for free safeties and strong safeties in training by 20 percent you can see it kind of goes up incrementally gap defenders same thing here, XP gains for your defensive lineman, 10%, then 20%, and then versatility is key for your linebackers, 10%, 20%. Short memories, which you you know might have if you're playing football after a while. Ask Brett Favre about that one. Um, but cornerbacks, 10 and 20%, and then the final piece. Now, you'll get that going either way. Let's check out the right side first. So line games, increase XP gains for offensive linemen by 20%. You know, at 10 and 20, it does the same thing. Fullbacks and halfbacks, receivers and tight ends, and then quarterbacks. So you can focus if you want to be defensive-minded for your head coach or offensive-minded in player growth. And then meeting in the middle, all players on your team count as scheme fits during training. So you're going to max out XP gains, and then you have a big decision to make. And these kind of get overpowered, which I think is fun because you don't have to use them if you don't want to. But some of these are quite good. So Fountain of Youth on the left side. Again, you have to make a decision. One or the other can't have both. You have slow ratings regression for one season for one position. So let's say you have an aging quarterback that you want to still be really, really good because that's your big piece. You can slow down his regression for a season and you can do this every season that you have this unlocked. So really, really cool there if you want to slow down regression. And on the other side, let's say you have this big time rookie and you want to know what their dev trade is. You just need to know there's a position battle. Two guys maybe have a great development trait or hidden development trait. You can reveal what that is and then maybe decide to play one guy over the other. So once per season, you can reveal a hidden dev trait. That's for player growth. As for staff modifications, and we'll get over to player personnel, which is my big favorite thing. We're going to skip the coordinators and then go back. But staff modifications, player personnel talents cost 10 and then 20% less. And then once again, you have to pick, well, may maybe not on this side. Maybe not. Can you just get both for this side? I guess you can. So sometimes it does make you make a decision. I think it might be bugged right now, but in this instance, we can choose both. But offensive coordinator talents cost 10 and then 20% less. 
Same thing here, not all is lost. 10% talent point refund when replacing an offensive coordinator. So that's gonna be a thing this year. You get to replace offensive and defensive coordinators and 20% as well. And then premier destination. For, first of all, let me explain talent refund. So once you sign a new coordinator, they just don't keep all the abilities that you had previously. It's a new guy. So you're gonna lose some of these and then you're gonna have to rebuild, but you do get a refund on those staff modification points if you have the talent previously. So that's pretty nice. Premier destination, increase the hiring bonus when signing an offensive coordinator. So when you hire a new guy, get staff points. That's very nice. On the right side, we have hands-on defense. DC coordinator talent costs 10% less. Same thing on the left side, but this is again, offensive versus defensive minded. And then these are big. Access an additional focus player through weekly strategy for tier one. Access an additional focus player through weekly strategy. I gotta show you uh, tier three. So let me buy some of these. So I guess for staff modifications, you have to buy everything in here before you can unlock the next tier. So maybe it's not bugged. Maybe this is just how they want you to do it. So now this is available for purchase. We've met the prerequisite, which is get all of these. So the next next tier, as you can see, is I guess just, you get to access an additional focus player. So you get two of those, which is pretty nice. And then the big one for head coach on the staff modifications front is mistakes were made. Reset one talent tree for either your offensive or defensive coordinator or player personnel once per season. So the cool thing about this, right, is we set it to our offensive coordinator. We can reset all of that. So let's say we didn't want to go one way. We want it to change, go a different way. You can do that. You're not locked in forever. You don't have to fire him. You can reset that and go a different way if you'd like to. So that's big. And as I said, we're going to skip offensive and defensive coordinator for right now. We'll go back to that because the player personnel is my favorite, favorite part. These are really, really fun. For mentors wanted, 5% trade discount on players older than 30. And that starts to add up because some of these players become a little bit more easy to trade for as they're older. But let's say there's a really good player that's like just 31 years old, superstar X Factor. You want him on your team, but you don't want to give up all that much, but you need him to compete right now. You can go out and trade for him for definitely a little bit more easily than you would have been able to and get that big player on your team. For draft day every day, you get a two and then a 4% trade discount for CPU draft picks, makes those easier to acquire or easier to acquire. Wheeling and dealing, you have trade value increase for your own draft picks, giving them more value, which means you can be able to trade up and down more easily and even trade for players more easily. For online one, guaranteed trade package for current user pick during the draft. That's a big one because if you need to trade down that spot, you want an offer, you can get a pretty lucrative trade package for the pick you're offering. You don't have to go looking for one. It just gives it to you right there. Not the best, but definitely pretty interesting. You're guaranteed to get that. Quite the sales pitch gives you non X Factor user players will be valued one dev trade higher than actual in trade. So a star value player is gonna be like a superstar. Normal will be like a star and there is a lot more value and a superstar will be valued at that max level at X Factor, which is super, super valuable in trades. So this one I think is huge, especially if it's like an aging player as well. You upgraded him to star, uh, star dev maybe, and now he's being valued like a superstar. I think that's massive. On the left side, everyone's got a price. So you get a trade discount for all CPU players. They don't just have to be 30 or older, 4% as well. And then on the right side, you have the grass is greener. Same thing, except for your own players you have more trade value for players on your team. And then all the way at the bottom for trades, you have Smooth Talker, reduce the cost of trading up during the draft. Again, I think that's huge. And you might be able to kind of finagle that so you can trade up in the draft and also get a player as well. So depending on how overpowered that is and how we could potentially abuse that, you might be able to trade up like one spot and get a really good player on the team. Let's go ahead and buy these and then we can even try that. So we'll do that in a bit, but for hometown discount, 5% discount on players under 80. And then the next tier is under 85. And then I think under 90 is what it probably will be. Yep, there's under 90 on resign. So that's pretty nice as you go through that. 
On the left side, 15 yards away, increased likelihood of free safeties and strong safeties signing through free agency. And then you can increase it again. In the middle there, you have offensive linemen. And then, of course, defensive linemen. The next spot is feels like home. Scheme fits have increased interest in signing through free agency. That's always fun. Backfield vision. Increase the likelihood of halfbacks and fullbacks. And then you can increase it even more. And then the second level up, linebackers. Very cool. Blanket coverage. You can increase the likelihood of corners signing through free agency. And again, you can do, a, do it again. Increase the likelihood even more. And then this is wide receivers and tight ends. The second is going to be quarterbacks. The penultimate spot there and then the ultimate is the unlocker unlock one player in re-signing who is not interested in negotiating once per season so if you've ever screwed up you can't re-sign a guy it's happened to me before i've had to franchise tag guys for so much more than i've wanted to but now you have another shot and you can unlock them and renegotiate i think that's huge so a lot of these so far are you want to either pick offense or defense that's pretty straightforward. You can pick whichever position you'd like, and then you can get these major ones at the end. I think the trades are going to be huge for franchise wheeling and dealing, obviously. And then with the coordinators, these are actual in-game abilities I'm sure you guys are going to be fairly interested in. Even though I'm like not a huge gameplay guy, I do do the big franchise every year on the channel. Might be even multiple of those this year. So again, make sure you're subscribed and on the lookout for those. But on the block, gain the ability to equip X-Factors on the offensive lineup. Pretty good for a starting ability. On the left side, you have boost impact blocking for fullbacks by one and then by three. This is impact blocking for tight ends by one and then by three. So if you really want to focus on just running the ball and you don't really even utilize a fullback, which a lot of offenses don't unless you're running I form, you could build your offense and just get your tight ends to be blocking like offensive linemen. And then you can do run block for offensive linemen in there or run block finesse, this is power versus finesse. So it depends if you're a zone blocking or a power run scheme, you can kind of go either way with that. Down here, boost pass block for tight ends by three, which I think is big if you bring in a tight end to pass block, you don't want them to go you know, one-on-one -on -one with a rushing outside linebacker. That's a recipe for disaster in a lot of cases, or even a defensive end, that'd be terrible. But you can get their pass block up and make them maybe a little bit better out there. This is impact blocking for receivers by one and then offensive lineman by one i think you probably you might even go for receivers here just because they're not the best already but if you can get their impact blocking up and just have them hold a block or pancake somebody just a little bit or you can't get pancake somebody a little bit but hold the block for a little bit longer could be pretty nice or you could just make your offensive line better and then at the bottom you can boost the strength rating for offensive lineman by four if you have not heard how strength works, we talked to uh, Andre, who is a dev on this. Hold blocks for longer. Pancake guys more easily. Strength is pretty big for offensive linemen. And then practice makes perfect for OC. You have boost awareness by offensive linemen. Boost catching traffic for receivers by three here at the bottom. It's going to be one and three again. Catching traffic for tight ends. Boost carrying for quarterbacks or carrying for halfbacks and fullbacks. Boost stamina for receivers. Boost stamina for quarterback, halfback, fullback, your backfield. And then you have release for receivers. You have catching for halfbacks and fullbacks. And you have catching for receivers and tight end by five at the bottom, which again, could be massive. For your DC, you have gained the ability to equip X-Factors on the defensive lineup, which is very nice. If you want X-Factors to be activated, you need these. You need these. Boost tackle for your linebackers. Boost tackle for your defensive linemen. Boost block shedding for defensive tackles. Boost block shedding for your defensive ends. Boost pursuit for your defensive linemen. Other side is boost pursuit for linebackers. And then you have boost hit power for your defensive ends. And then you have boost hit power for defensive tackles. And the bottom one is boost the strength rating for your defensive line by four. The other side, of course, is pliability boost the injury rating and injury could be pretty big so this is one that you're going to want to get right off the bat in my opinion boost play rec for corners play rec for your safeties pursuit for cornerbacks pursuit for your safeties which i, I get i think it's gonna be more important for safeties who's catching for corners who's catching for your safeties and you boost stamina for your entire secondary or for your linebackers i think linebackers might be a little bit more important burning stamina trying to shed blocks 
than cornerbacks and safeties, but we'll have to see how that plays out. And then you can boost tackling for safeties or tackling for cornerbacks. Your safeties are naturally going to be a little bit better at that. So maybe you're going to opt to go for corners instead. And then the roadblock, you can boost press for corners, which is pretty nice. So those are the skill trees. Let's see them in action. Let's try and make some trades. So we have the ability to trade for players, and these are not going to be names you know, since I'm in 2048. <laughs> uh, but we do have the ability to trade for 30-year-old players more easily. So let's find a really high overall 30-plus-year-old. Justin Allen's 30. Now, is it players over 30? Or is 30 included in that? Let's start with the third round pick. Just see how that how much that gives us. Well, he's a 93 overall, I guess not. Should we try with, with a, and that's actually not that bad for a second. Should we try with someone who's 31? I think so. Oh, this is perfect. This is exactly when you want to use it on an offensive lineman, right? Where they're going to still be good for a while, but they are over 30 years old and left tackles are pretty tough to get usually. How far does the third round pick get us? Not very far. Now a first round pick almost let us get him oh my goodness what about a future first that's going to be slightly less valuable and then like a current four how's that okay we could definitely make that work so we don't need to actually make this trade work for you to see that like we can make it work a seventh round pick would move the needle but i want to hold on to that pick so i can test out my theory of trading up in the draft and getting a really good player in there as well or we could just even test that with like like a fifth round pick. So you could see we were like just about to get him. Let's go ahead and simulate to the draft and try to wheel and deal during the actual draft. All right, so test number one is going to be how easy is it to get the number one overall pick? So manage roster, trade center, and then let's navigate over to the chargers. It should be as easy as possible to trade for this given our coach upgrade so let's start off with the ninth overall pick we should have a decent way to go but we are already almost in the door let me add in a fourth rounder does that do it for you we're close we are close what about a fifth does a fifth do it it's done wow number nine overall a fourth and a fifth gets us number one so these if you unlock them are very 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 strong and the draft has been boosted a little bit this year as well which is nice the dev traits are all much better this year a lot more on that later in future videos you guys are going to see for sure especially in some of these rebuilds i'm gonna have a texans rebuild coming out very shortly again stay on the lookout for that but a player like Quan short could be very very good but now let's try and trade this pick for as much value because we should be able to do that again based on our skill trees so the Patriots are really, really bad in this. Can we trade? I mean, their best player is only... He's a 32-year-old running back. Can we just get him as like a throw-in? <laughs> Can we trade the number one overall pick for number two? Your beast running back who's a 92 overall end of first next year? Just about, honestly. Can we just get number two overall a first next year and number 34? can't get that that's actually kind of surprising right now it seems a lot easier to trade up than to trade down let's try something with the vikings let's do i just want number three overall a second and number three overall projected next year i don't think that's a ton for number one overall they're really not even considering it it's the number one overall pick in the draft what am i missing here yeah so i kind of i don't really get that don't love that now, what we can do with number one overall, a third this year, and a future fourth, is get two 92 overall players from the Vikings. They're two highest rated players. So, it seems like with picks, it's easy to trade for players who are established versus guys who are, uh, you know, potentially good in the draft, which is interesting. All right, so this is my true test. The Bills have the 40th pick in the draft. I have the 41st. <laughs> these are how powerful some of these can be. You can trade up one spot. And the Bills will just give it to you out of the kindness of their heart. And there you go. 
So you can trade up one spot for literally nothing just from having some of these staff points uh, put into your skill tree. So that's pretty big. You can trade number 40, a sixth and a seventh to move up to number 31. That's pretty big. I'm gonna see if I can just straight like trade all the way up to one by doing this. 31 for 30. That works. <laughs> I should be able to just get, I know this is awful what I'm doing, uh, but I should just be able to move 30 for 29 and then 29 for 28. I wonder how many picks in advance I can actually do that. I'm a menace. So 30 doesn't work for 28, right? But I, I guarantee you it's gonna work for 29. So basically as I understand it, the pick is just valued depending on the round. It's probably a percentage, but we can say two spots higher. And that's why a team would be willing to trade down for nothing. That would be my guess. It's like, watch 30 for 29 accepted but we can't do 30 for 28 so i mean you could throw in things to make that happen i wonder what's like the least we could throw in to move up the most i mean that was pretty easy number 29 and a first round pick next year moves us back up to number one so yeah this is this is pretty strong we could have gone just like one by one that's not really the point of this video i just wanted to show you guys everything about the coach trees and then how you can actually use them and then you can use that to draft players. And I like the look of Quan Short at a Clemson corner. Looks really, really good. And of course, scouting is going to be completely revamped in the future. He is an 81 overall. Hidden development trait. You're going to be seeing that happen a lot more now. His coverages are better than they have been in years past. Like last year, it was always super lopsided. Now players are actually a lot more balanced. So he is a uh, very, very good at 81 overall. And just to show you guys how the draft has improved, I know that's not the point of this video, but just a quick glance. First of all, a few 80 overall or above is pretty amazing, but last year, all the top players would be normal development. And this guy is hidden. Let's go ahead and just see what his dev trait is. I am a little bit curious about it, of course, because it is hidden. And we have, let's see here, superstar dev. Pretty nice, pretty nice. But let's see all the guys in the draft that are hidden. Battles. Hidden. Lindsay. Normal. I, I don't think normal shouldn't happen, but it shouldn't be as much as it was. Normal. Three normals in a row. Wild. But there's hidden. It was like 20 normals in a row last year. Normal. Normal. Hidden. The ratio is definitely a lot stronger. Hidden. Hidden. Three in a row. Like, this is unbelievable. Normal again. But if you have like a 50% hit right now on whether you get hidden development trade or not like that's so good for the first round as opposed to less than five percent it felt like last year but uh, that's gonna do it for the video guys appreciate you watching hopefully you learned a thing or two about these skill traits and hopefully more like personality based videos coming in the future with the rebuilds and the franchise videos and all that uh, but it is good to get a tips and tricks out there just to help some of you newer guys to the game and of course when scouting comes out in uh, September at some point, I will have an updated video about how scouting works. So make sure you're staying tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Taking it back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud, speed burst good.